Hey guys, it's Mandeep. It is um, Saturday, May the 16th, and I'm going to do a tutorial today and talk about how to draw trend lines and how to draw channels. So it's a commonly asked question. And uh, so this is not using a script, right? What, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use our visuals and draw it using the tools that are available uh, inside of uh, Thinkorswim. Now, here's a rule that I read uh, a long time back, probably about 10 or 15 years ago, which is still embedded in my head, which says if you're drawing an upward sloping trend line, you start with the lowest low and connect it to the highest low preceding the highest high. And we'll take a look at a couple examples. And then if you're drawing a, a trend line that's sloping downwards, you start from the highest high and you connect it to the lowest high preceding the lowest low. So one of the things I've done is I've uh, converted this uh, instead of a bar chart or a candlestick, right? I'm just, I've used the line chart because it makes it uh, a little bit easier visually for me, right? So now, of course, you're gonna select this trend line and let's just start from here. The lowest low and which is the, uh, the lowest high is here preceding the highest high, which is around this area. So these are the two points that I'd like to connect. And your objective has to be that it covers or touches multiple points, right? So now this is a reasonable trend line because you know you had multiple touches. And uh, of course we finally broke here. So you know if you had followed this through and through, you, you were able to pick this up at uh, definitely good prices or good bottoms. Now, Again, you can also draw a downward sloping trend line and you can see that what we want to do is, you know, have multiple touches. So there you go. This seems like a reasonable trend line. Now this forms what's called a symmetric triangle and it broke here. Now a few days back, so the state is um, 10th of May and I mentioned in mentioned this in stock twits that, you know, we are at this lowest point and I really don't know which way it's going to break, but it, whether it's going to break or bounce, only time will tell. And of course, you know, once this level was taken out, it gave you a good reference to trade against, right? So if it, uh, you know, let's say it had moved down a little bit and I mean, it reclaimed the trend line, then you could have said, okay, your thesis was wrong, but this continued and it gave a nice profit, right? If you follow this trade, it took you from 634 down into the 550 area, which is a pretty decent profit. So let's like take a look at a few other examples and that'll kind of help you in how to draw these trend lines. And we'll also look at uh, how you can do channels. So here's another example. So, so visually for me, you know, I see this to be the trend line. Now in this case, it broke and it reclaimed it very quickly. So that's that's uh, something to keep in mind. One of the things you can do is you can right click and say redraw as a channel and then pick, you know, what a, what is the spot that where you had maximum touches, right? So here, here's one. So to me, this is your dominant channel and a foot sloping channel. And of course, there was a point where it did break out and you, you know, you could have gone long on it. But once it you know, fell back into the channel, you could use this again as your stop loss, right? So at least you don't lose a lot in the trade. And if you were raising your stop loss, you would be making some money. So this is your channel for that. Now let's look at a few other examples and, and then you can use this, you know, similar methodology to practice and figure out. So for me, so I'll take this as a starting point. Let, let's connect these and you can see in some cases it's to the dot where the bounce happens. So here we go. And uh, so you've got one, two, three, and you know, you can, I mean, this is not exactly a touch, but close enough and another touch. But here, it's pretty obvious, right? If you were to draw this, then you would connect the highest high to the lowest high here. And there you go, right? So now you have at least some reference points, right? So this is forming a symmetric triangle on the daily chart. And I wouldn't take the trade uh, at least at this point in time, once this tends to break this out and uh, you know, you would never know if the breakout is genuine or not, but there's a few clues you can get and one of them of course is the volume, right? If, if this breakout happens on like 1.5x the typical volume or two times the typical volume, then you know, it's a genuine breakout and even then you wouldn't know, but the point is it's giving you uh, a certain reference point and it's stacking the probability in your favor. So that's uh, 
an example of uh, an RCL. Now let's look at uh, let's look at uh, J.P. Morgan uh, here. Yeah. So now this has been uh, trending upwards. So again, you know, here's a good point to start your trend line yeah, and connect it here. Then right click and redraw as a channel, right? So when you redraw this as a channel, it gives you a little bit of a reference point to where the thing can proceed to, right? One of the other things you can do if the channel is wide, you can always like break it into uh, like a third, right? So now you can like maybe draw another channel inside of this. And all these are doing is giving you certain points of references as I mentioned before. So if it breaks this out, there's a decent chance that it could keep moving up. So either way, this is, uh, you know, something that it just takes a little bit of a practice and you can, you know, plot it on your own. We'll take a look at one more example. Let's look at Peloton here. And so I drew this, like this was uh, a point where uh, it offered significant support right around this 100 level. And once it broke, uh, it had, you know, uh, a 20 point profit. Now it's getting back into the zone. So one of the things I would do is I wouldn't take the trade. I would like draw this channel again here. And uh, here you go, All right? So something like this, right? Where you have multiple touches. And I would take the trade at least till we break this. So one of the things is uh, uh, you can also have more than one channel. So, you know, this is your longer term channel and you can also, this is also valid, right? So if you draw it here, it's also valid, right? Because this is your more, uh, uh, shorter term and you can see that this more coincides where the previous support was right so the previous support was around 100 and this channel is uh, basically intersecting around that line so uh, we'll have to see how it behaves I don't know right and nobody knows right how it's going to react at this level but this is what you would watch so if it starts to break that that's when you would probably go long let's look at one example of a downward sloping trend line, which is these uh, SQQQ, which is the uh, inverse of the Qs, right? So now here, again, you know, so this is the high, let's just draw this line and you, you'll see that we want places where you have maximum touches, so it's around here. Then right click on this and say redraw as a channel. And again, you know, to me, this is where the maximum touches happen, right? Again, uh, it's not always perfect, right? There are times it's going to break out of the channel and then, you know, back into it. So a couple of things can happen, right? So we could actually uh, go back and touch this trend line and move back above. That would signify that, you know, a short position can be continued on the queues or it gets back into the channel, which means the, uh, upward direction in the queues is most likely going to continue, right? So I'm not telling you, I'm not giving you a bias, right? Which way it's going to go. That's a decision that you take based on this, but you can use these as good reference uh, points for support as well as uh, for uh, resistance. And, you know, if you're a swing trader as well, these trend lines give you a good entry point, right? If you're swinging three to six months out or, you know, taking leaps, into next year or the year after, then you know which is a good point to pick this up. I also mentioned this in my Discord room and I'll show that to you again, which is Microsoft. And I'd mentioned uh, as this has started to fall, I said, you know, around 240 would be a good level to, to get back into Microsoft, right? And it, of course, uh, broke this because these are never, uh, you know, to the penny, right? But uh, it was only like um, a couple dollars below that and it bounced back. Now, again, this is the, this is connecting the highest high um, uh, channel. And now you can, you know, use this again as a reference point and say, okay, I could take a trade, not a bad spot around 240 and, you know, play it into this, you know, 260, 270 level. Now there's no guarantee it's going there or how long it takes. But if it starts to break this channel again in the downward direction, that could be your stop loss. So hopefully this helps and I'll see you guys in the next video.